I just found one of the oldest surviving relics of my early film career, right around maybe 1973, 74. Uh, me and my cousin, brother, and father, and uncle went about filming our own little Star Trek movie. It's a one reeler. And um, I carved a tiny little Enterprise for the opening scene when the when the Enterprise goes, whoosh, you know, about with the titles, the opening sequence. And this is it. It was broken. It was stuffed in a box. And I, again, I was I was 13 years old or so. I remember this years ago, I had it on my desk and it wasn't, wasn't broken, but it was always out in the open. So that's, oh, a good 30 years of dust accumulated. It's just balsa wood and it was painted white and it was bright white when it was, when I first made it. I'm going to see if I can clean it up and glue it back together. It's got to be the oldest surviving film prop that I have. After all, the Enterprise that goes swoosh in the opening titles is nothing much more than a blur in the original series. The original effect, that is. So, this has practically no detail at all. But, it got the, it, made, it did the, it gave you the impression that it was supposed to. You can even just barely make out I uh, actually tried the tiny little ink in the uh, nomenclature I'm going to take some paper towels and 409 and see if that will uh, address the dust Yeah, that's some improvement. There's more nomenclature there. I think uh, I think this process of the four oh nine is gonna work. We don't want to leave it on there permanently. We want to dampen it and then do the quick rub. Then the cell. I don't recall having any, say, orangey red coloring on the end of that, but that could be done. So there's your nacelle. Ah, we'll leave the saucer, the piece de la resistance. So here's the now, should I disassemble this and clean it, or should I try to leave it alone? It's very solid. It's still solid, but very delicate. Well, let's try leaving it alone, leaving it assembled. Wow. I mean, I just enjoy filmmaking, and I like to save things. because their connections. Some people can't be bothered to save anything. You can see some of the detail on that side. Uh, trust me, I don't save everything. There's a lot that's been lost over the years, of course. So we're doing the old Q-tip applique wow look at the dust back there oh. look at that <laughs> we'll have to let this dry up really good before we attempt to glue the pieces together. But 
for a 14 year old attempt hand carved I mean it's not nothing intricate I mean you know the scene that I'm referring to the whoosh I mean what is it maybe one second and then of course there were whooshes uh, as the credit the opening credits it whooshed by a couple of times but each shot was less than a second didn't need really any detail at all. I wonder how small the original effects miniature to do those wishes were was. If anyone knows, that would be interesting. I, I can't imagine they had the depth of field to use any to use the eleven footer. Obviously not. Even with some optical work, it doesn't look. It looks like it's some kind of tiny little thing like I'm sure it's bigger than this uh, if anyone has any information on that that would be one of those interesting Star Trek trivias let us all know will you ah well there's the um, the dish just drawn in there's some deterioration of the balsa wood Let's get that in front of this nacelle. So I think I'll upgrade the front of that with a little red orange marker in the front of the nacelle. <laughs> can't, we can't light this thing up, can we? No, I don't think so. If anyone uh, has built the old AMT models, the Enterprise, everybody had the sagging the cell problem. <laughs> sagging the cell problem. You think, um, now I don't think that's going to happen. I imagine there's better reinforcement. Everybody had the sagging the cells. Yeah. <sighs> We're going to clean the saucer section now. Try one half of the time. Oh my God, what a crude little, what a crude little thing, huh? Oh my God, going on 50 years old, such a thing. <laughs> Will the inked on details survive this? cleaning process it seems to be that the ink is pretty um, pretty durable during the uh, break in the sequence here I had to offload some of the video file make some room and I discovered that taking a white pencil And um, applying white pencil to this really makes it pop again. There's only so much the cleaning can do because being a flat paint 50 years old, some of the dust is really in the grains of the balsa. And I suppose if I rubbed it even harder, at some point you'd be taking off the panel, the drawn on panel lines and ink. So we don't want to do that so we'll have to hold off on hold off on the aggressive rubbing because then we'll just be taking paint off and all the details so we're going to apply some white pencil near the end now you see there's the top so it's displayed from the top and so there's where all the dust fell now you notice the bottom there's very little dust. I don't think there's much at all. And that's just gravity at work. The same thing was true for my large models. Naturally, the dust forms on top, but we'll give it a we'll give it the same treatment. You see, there wasn't much there. Boy, this thing. I mean I could snap that in two. So easy. 
Looks a little bit like the Reliant, doesn't it? With the chiseled out, you know, the wear and tear on the edge of the balsa. Well, that's, that's just wear and tear from age, sitting around, being bumped around. I mean, look at that. That's wear and tear in the wood. I've got to be careful. I mean, this, this could crumble. So that's about it. I mean, I can't really get a rag in here. I suppose I could take a toothpick like this and rub in there. I guess this isn't Sagar of an obsession. <laughs> this is just a little side project. Yeah. Can only take this so far, but the white pencil is really gonna bring her back. So the actual one rear one reeler film star trek that we made oh my god the um there's some outtakes and they're not much different than the than the actual takes we were laughing our ass off so hard making that thing and uh i wonder if i could actually get away with posting that i guess i'd have to remove the name star trek off of the image blur it out i think there's a rule fan fan-made film or some disclaimer or something maybe i'll look into it but if you folks want to see it i think um, it improves with intoxication gather a bunch of serious star trek fans and together and say we found a lost uh, some lost footage and put that thing on uh, people will crap their pants i guarantee it <laughs> so let's see if the Appearance will improve with the little white pencil between the panel lines only. Between. Yeah, I think so. There's a blemish or something. You know, that's not a blemish. That's the inked on little nav lights there. There's one on each side. Yeah. I mean, anyone that knows Trek knows this ship. Top to bottom, stem to stern. Whatever. That's what that is. So at the time I made this, no doubt. Ooh, ooh, crash, bang. At the time I made this thing, I had the AMT model, the original AMT model, which you can see in the film, in the one reeler. And I had the AMT Klingon, which I actually blew up with firecrackers. <laughs> Well, I had a firecracker on it. Yeah, it is. It's blown up in the basement, if you can imagine such a thing. In the basement, deafening, deafening loud with the fire extinguishers standing by and all that happy horse shit, you know. So, again, it's a riot. My father dressed up as the Klingon Kang. <laughs> Kang. Yeah, we had a backdrop, you know, of... Klingon wall with their little with their symbol and he had uh, black paper mustache and charcoal and eyebrows the whole bit the Klingon the Klingon and uh, he you know my father was a was a trooper he did it for us he did it for us kids participated he could be a big kid my uncle Anthony he was Kirk and he was a ham and he was a comedian and he was he was uh, also a big Trek fan. And uh, he really hammed it up. And he's the one who made us, cracked us up. The outtakes, I'm telling you, he made fun of Shatner in his own way. So that, this white pencil is making this thing pop a little better. Hey, it can't hurt. It's 50 years old. I'm certainly not going to paint it again and lose all that vintage inked on pencil. Uh, ink, inked on details, I mean, sorry. I don't usually work and talk at the same time, so it's a little awkward. Let's be careful here. And there's this nomenclature. And I might actually put this under a big magnifying glass and see if I can touch up, make that nomenclature a little more readable. 
is some nomenclature. I like that word, nomenclature. But see the white pencil below the nomenclature, and there's before, so you'll see. Watch. It really brings that back. Look at that. I hope it shows in the light here. It really brings that paint back. It's a tiny little restoration is what it is. Warp engine the cell. Here's the touched up version. There you go. Now, I, I, I don't, um, don't give me all these perfectionist comments. Your nacelle is 1.2 millimeters too long, or the color is not quite the, you know, don't give me that. This is not about a super exact replica. Now, this is about cleaning up and touching up something made by a 14-year-old out of balsa wood. So that's all it is. So I'm going to take some matte acrylic paint and correct, correct a little um, <clears throat> deficiency. And I missed the back of the nacelle struts, I guess they call And so the pencil won't quite stick. So yeah, a little little matte white acrylic paint on the back of those and I think what I'll actually do is add a little bit of smudge like graphite smudge just to darken them a, a tad so it'll match the rest and I, what I'm gonna do is this really won't get ain't gonna be clean won't come clean so what I'm going to do is build that up with a little regular old Elmer's, build it up. And then I'm going to take a paper puncher and find a piece of copper paper, colored paper, and, and make a tiny little, oh, what do they call that thing? The, um, Deflector shield. I'll make a tiny little deflector shield array. I guess that's the name of it. Right? And I'll plop it there. I don't think that's going too far overboard. Yeah, good enough. And we'll fill in this little hole here. Look at some of those portholes made with little pin, little pin, pin pricks. Even got the shape right pretty close for a 14-year-old. Oh, and I do a little, what they call a little dry brushing, very little paint. Spread it around like this. It's not a big soaked in brush, it's dry brushing. Very little paint. This lettering's a little messed up right here. We're going to cover that intentionally and redo it. That, that, that. We'll touch that lettering up again. Yeah, there we go. Don't be alarmed. That was intentional. Okay. And then under here. This is a rather big moment. The return of the saucer section. Side the cell. The slot's way wider than it needs to be. Something like that. We'll do a little adjustment. It's getting there. We're going to do the deflector dish. A little more touch up. getting there. I'm going to touch up that nomenclature. 
taking this opportunity to add little blue fillets which will dry clear and you won't really won't see them to all of the open cracks where the major components join up. I hit upon this idea of correcting the shape on the bottom of the saucer section and I feather the white glue in This works. I don't know. I think it will. Put down a little piece of drip paper. Install my quick. Anyway, gotta do a little more feathering. We're gonna have this is gonna be one shot at this. Put our stand on. We're gonna turn it right side up and let gravity do its thing with the shape. Whereas that should start to, the glue I put on there should start to, this under here, should start to sag down like, well, like a breast. <laughs> ah, you can see it happening. It's happening. Um, but it'll probably be too much, so we'll, we'll snip it later. But yeah, you can sort of see it there. The saucer, is, we need to go hard to stop it, hard to stop it, <laughs> to get that uh, thing lined up. <laughs> oh. Captain, Z minus 5,000 meters, hey, whoa, look at that. So we're gonna have to, whoa, look at that. That's a beautiful thing. No, port, port, hard to port. That is actually kind of, it's like Flea Circus Star Trek. Lest I close my hand, thus 